Bonjour knitters! Um, I said bonjour because I'm wearing a beret, so of course I'm in a mood. Um, I wanted to talk about the beret first so I can take it off my head. I hate, actually, I hate wearing hats um, indoors or anyway. Um, but I wanted to show it off because I love it so much. Um, this is the best beret pattern. It's by James Watts and I love it. Um, there are two sizes available. I did the dramatic one, like I mentioned last week I was going to. I like things big. Um, my big chunky knit earrings, they're knit. Yes, oh, um, every designer dyer maker that I mentioned in the episode, I will put in the description below, as well as links to my Ko-Fi, Patreon, Instagram, and Ravelry, like always, so you can find whatever I talk about there. And uh, I will also include these earrings. Um, the yarn, <clears throat> pardon me, the yarn is the Wandering Flock. Um, I have leftovers. So I used uh, just less than half of a skein of the mohair that it came with. And this is the colorway Navy. Wow, the sun shining on it really brings it to life. Um, this is the leftovers of the fingering weight. Um, this is actually a single ply and the colorway is Unicorn Magic. Unicorn Magic. And I think it's very aptly named. Um, so James and Watts pattern, the best beret, it calls for a worsted weight yarn. So what I did was I held the fingering weight double, which is why there's so little left. Um, and holding it double with the mohair, um, even using the suggested needle size gave me exactly the gauge that I wanted. And you can see here the yarn color, because of the mohair, it looks almost, it's like a tweed effect. Actually, let me take off the hat now to show you. Yeah, it, sh it comes off almost like a tweed effect. I love the halo from this. Um, I really love Geraldine's eye for color, Geraldine of the Wandering Flock. I love her eye for, for color and I'm very excited to wear this hat when I meet her for the first time in person. So excited um, when I go to New York in just a couple weeks. And she also has not the same pattern, she used a different pattern, but she has a beret in this because um, it was actually a beret set that she put together and we're gonna be matching pretty much. And I'm so excited, you guys. Um, but yeah, I really I love this color so much. Yeah, I kind of think maybe I should do a full sweater and something like this. We'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's uh, this is my first non-sweater pattern, like non-sweater knit since November of 2019. So it's been two years that I've only knit sweaters. And I have to say it was quite refreshing to do something so small and quick. This was a 24 hour project and it made me feel very accomplished um, very quickly. So I really loved it. Um, the best beret, the increases, you know, you start at the rim, you do an eye cord and then you pick up. I wish I had gone a little bit stretchier on my eye cord. I made it really tight. Um, I wish I'd gone a little bit stretchier, a little bit more give, but it's it sits very snug on my head so I know it won't go flying off in the wind. So I guess that's kind of nice. Um, but the increases start uh, and they decrease at odd intervals. So it's actually, the pattern is written quite intuitively, but it's you're not gonna get that like line of decreases, the really neat line of decreases. If you are very familiar with beret patterns, you'll know what I'm talking about. You know, when you can see the lines of increases and decreases, so it looks like a whorl. This one, it's a lot more organic and spread out so that it kind of looks more like almost a, a felted beret rather than a classically knit one. I kind of like the look of this better without the whorl. And you'll know what I'm talking about if you know what I mean. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't, whatever. But yeah, hat, very cute. Can't wait to wear it in New York. I am not going to take a finished object photo of it yet. I have this very beautiful winter coat right now, but it is being tailored to fit my ridiculously short stature. So once I get my coat, uh, it'll be right before I leave for New York. So I'll get the coat, go to New York, take the dang picture, matching with Geraldine will be adorable. That's the plan. Um, but yeah, I wanted to show you guys to commemorate my first non-sweater in two years. Yay! Yeah, so that one's done. Um, I have made progress on some of my other whips. I actually made minus progress. So the last time I showed you guys, I still had time on this Amara. I still have one sleeve to go. So the first sleeve I finished, um, 
but I did it in a way that it was three quarter sleeves and then ribbing. Sorry, mohair in my mouth. Um, three quarter sleeves and then ribbing um, to match my friend Megan's version. But the thing is, my friend Megan Kimchi and Co. She did uh, her gauge all around on the project a lot chunkier than mine, um, a lot chunkier than the pattern. It's very relaxed and. It looks cute with three quarter sleeves on that, but because the gauge of the body of mine is tighter than the gauge of her body, it just didn't look right with the sleeves. I had to go back and with brioche, you know, it's a bit of a pain to go back, especially if you didn't put in a lifeline before, which of course I didn't because I had no idea this issue was going to come up. So I had to tink back quite a bit. I've added uh, a few more inches. I'm, I just have a couple more to go before I do the ribbing. And so I think I'm just gonna follow the sleeves to pattern. Um, if anything, this project has taught me that I need to calm down and just follow the dang pattern. Um, because the only time I've gotten in trouble with this pattern is when I decide to be a little bit too clever and try to do something different. I really just needed to trust the pattern. Um, Rachel Knits things did an amazing job. I should have just trusted her from the very beginning. It's my own dang fault. But Beautiful, almost done. I'm planning on finishing it by the time I release this episode. So you may see on Instagram a finished object photo by the time this episode is out, especially if it takes as long to upload as it did last time. Last time it took more than 24 hours to upload a video, by the way. It was only a 20 minute video and it took 24 hours, whatever. Um, it's because of Vlogmas and I haven't watched any of the Vlogmas. I feel bad saying that because my friend Andrea has been very religiously posting her vlogmas videos every day. Um, I just haven't gotten around to watching any of them and y'all are killing the YouTube upload times. <laughs> I honestly like, it, there was such a stark difference from November to December in terms of upload times. And I think it's just cause everybody's uploading vlogmas videos every day. Um, and no, like if you're doing that awesome, like I'll probably watch a few later on, but it's killing me is what's happening. <laughs> At least my upload time. So that's Amara again. I know I said I would finish it last time and technically I did finish a sleeve, but then I had to go back. So. Um, I made some progress on my Varro pullover, which you guys have been really nice about. I, I, it was just a few people that pointed out that the color wasn't my color. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. Um, I did steam block it since we last spoke. So you can see it will probably fit me now. That's great news. Um, it'll grow more with wet blocking. I just wanted to do the steam blocking just to see um, what the likelihood of it fitting was. <laughs> ah, and um, done quite a bit on the body. I just need a few more inches and then the ribbing and I'll cast off. Um, I'm really excited about that. If you guys uh, aren't on Instagram, you missed my friend Kimchi and Co, Megan. She actually knit uh, an inch and a half on this body um, our last weekend hangout because she is more, much more of a monogamous snitcher than I am, which is not at all. And uh, so the only project she was working on, it was at the point where you really need to look at the chart, you really need to focus, and it's not really, it wasn't at a point where you could just hang out and knit and talk with your friends. So she knows that I always have a project that's just stuck in it. And I do that, you know, for when, I get stuck behind an accident on the highway or I'm stuck at the DMV, you know, it's always nice to have just a stocking at something to work on. And I am one of those crazy people that brings around three projects with me wherever I go, three projects. Um, so she knew I would have something and I did. Um, I had this and she did stock it up for me. And you can see she did a really excellent job matching my gauge. Um, I don't think you can see any difference from where she knit versus where I knit. Yeah, she did really great matching that gauge. Um, yeah, so this is kind of like my friendship sweater. Um, yeah, so she got to work on that while we hung out and that was really nice for me because it let me breathe a little bit easier and work on other things. Um, yeah, so it's really nice to have friends, especially friends who knit. But Varro pullover, deadline hurtling towards me and still plugging away at it, still plugging away. Um, yeah, it's really beautiful though, yeah. Uh, now I know that I'm known for pastels, like I talked about last episode, I think I'm known for pastels, but I do, 
I love a good jewel tone. I really do. I love deep dark colors just as much as I love the light ones. Obviously you guys see a lot more of the light ones up here, you know, but I do have a lot of deeper tones. And one of them that I'm planning to use is for, well, it's, I'm not even sure I'm gonna sign up for the test knit, but Samantha Guerin, I have test knit for her a few times and I consider her a friend. She posted her new upcoming design. It's not even out for testing yet, but it is stunning. It is this very dramatic, bold color work yoke um, in worsted weight. And um, it looks very autumnal slash wintery. That's the, I mean, I think it's also part of the color she chose, but also the design itself. It looks rustic. It reminds me of like being in a cabin in the woods when it's snowing outside. It's just stunning. Um, so she posted that and at my time it was like seven in the morning, maybe even earlier. And the sun wasn't out yet, but I literally could not stop thinking about this design as soon as I saw it. For like 30 minutes I was in, be in bed going like, I can't, I can't, I can't. So I jumped out of bed and I like rummaged through my stash trying to find what I would use for it. And of course I told Samantha this and she thought it was really funny but um, the yarn I have picked is this. It's very similar to the color she picked. Um, she did an orange uh, and neutral, almost white. Uh, I've gone for a little bit different. So this, it's very orangish, but it's much more of a, an orangey red. The sun kind of washes it out in a weird way, sorry. Um, the middle colorway is called Quail's Egg and the red is called Wine Sap and both are from Cedar House Yarns in her DK base. So I'll have to fudge around with the needle size to see if I can get it to work with this pattern because hers was recommended worsted. But I think I can figure it out. Um, but I really, I love this combination. I've had this yarn like set aside for something to do for years. It's probably three years that I've had this yarn and I love it so much, especially this middle color, Quail's Egg. The sun is really on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you can see a little bit better when it's in the shade. Um, yeah, like these gorgeous dark speckles. It looks like a toasted pink marshmallow. I love it. Um, yeah, so deep dark jewel tones. You can see I'm not opposed to them. I really, I think I do an orange sweater once a year and I have to do one this year. I haven't done it yet. So maybe 2022, I'll start with an orange sweater. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, so I know I'm, you know, going out of my color comfort zone again, at least the what's known as my color comfort zone. It's really not, I, I love jewel tones. Um, but yeah, so I'll do that. Um, another project I have started is the Jen Stein Gas, Jen Stein Gas um, New Year's Knit. So you know when you listen to a song in childhood and you like come up with lyrics that you believe through and through are the actual lyrics and then as an adult you like actually learn what the lyrics are and you're like that is that is not what I thought it was that that can't be right um and you realize your life is a lie that was me when someone pointed out that I was mispronouncing Jen Stein Gass's name it's Jen Stein Gass there's no L my brain input an L in her name when I read it because obviously I've only ever heard it written I've only ever seen it written never heard it said aloud so like my brain put in an L and for the past four years or whatever I've been saying science Stein class because my brain is dumb so thank you viewer who pointed that out and made me question my entire life I'm kidding um yeah it was just one of those weird moments where I had to like sit back and be like, what else am I wrong about in my entire life? Probably everything. Um, but yeah, so every year she does a New Year's Day release pattern. She's done it for six years. And last year I was lucky enough to be part of that. But as you guys probably know, last year, the end of last year was a little rough, a little rough for me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I finished her uh, 2020, 2021, going into 2021, or at least 2021, um, New Year's Day pattern. And uh, I blocked it and I was getting ready to take FO shots, but then my mom died. And 
I was not in a place mentally, emotionally, whatever, to be able to take pretty photos and smile. And um, like I, I took a picture of the sweater itself and that's really all I could do at that time. I just, I couldn't imagine taking a photo of me, you know, because anyway. Yeah, so that sweater is always going to be linked with my feelings at that time of losing her. And uh, I was really, really excited at the opportunity to be part of this round of the New Year Testnet because um, I think it would be a good way to pay homage to the year that I've had. Um, I make jokes about like it being a hell of a year, but it's really been a hell of a year for me. Um, like the first day, New Year's Day, um, what I did on New Year's Day was I got my mom's ashes back. Um, so that was like a weird way to start the year. Um, yeah, so losing my mom, the breakup, but the breakup was the best thing to happen this year, honestly, like it was so necessary. I've made some wonderful friends and I'm gonna talk about my friends in the sappy portion later on. Um, but anyway, that all that all that to say, I'm very excited to be participating in this New Year test knit. The yarn that I'm using is uh, Explorer Knits. <clears throat> Pardon me, Explorer Knits. This is the colorway linen. And if I could just like get the shade to cooperate with me, I'm so sorry. It's so sunny. It's so beautiful out. It's ridiculous. It's just a very soft neutral. Um, it's a little bit more tan gray than I expected from her photos. I think. I love Allie, I love Explore Knits, y'all know it, but I think she tends to over edit her photos, at least turn up the brightness, because when you see linen in photos, it looks much more white, like it looks just slightly off white, um, and then in real life I got it and it looks more like tan gray. So not to say I don't love the color, I do, it just wasn't what I was expecting. So I think if you do buy from Explorer Knits, just keep that in mind that oftentimes our colors are just a little bit darker than what they appear on the screen. Um, this one is Hypothesis Yarns, Hypothesis Yarns. She's a Canadian dyer. I think she's taken a break from dyeing now, um, but the colorway is Persephone and she did a pre-order. I love this color so much. Um, I'm, used to, I'm using worsted weight. Uh, the pattern itself, it's not released, it's not named, but it is written for uh, worsted or DK. So yeah, I'm, I just cast on and I am through the first three sets of increases and I'm working on the short rows now. So it's gonna move quick, um, Jen Stein gas. And guess uh, her test knits have a three week turnaround so if you want to test and you're new to testing and or or you're a slow knitter you like to you know savor the process i don't recommend jen stein gas test knits for that because every test i've done for her it's a three week turnaround um, which is pretty quick for i think the average knitter so just keep that in mind. She's an amazing designer. I love knitting her work, but if you are slower and you like to savor, test knit for someone else. There are lots of designers out there, amazing designers out there, and many of them have longer test knit schedules, so that may suit you better. Um, of course, it's not required that you test knit. You know, I didn't test knit for many, many years, but if you want to start getting into it, just keep in mind about the schedules. Now, this episode I'm recording super early. It is Tuesday. It is eight in the morning because I'm trying to do this before my hearings for the day. Um, I'm recording on Tuesday because uh, I wanna knit, I, not knit, I always wanna knit. I wanna wrap up my friend's Christmas gifts, but I can't do it until I record a video of it. And we are not meeting until Friday or Saturday morning and then the following Monday with one of my friends. Um, so that's why I'm trying to record this early so I can actually show you guys and then wrap it up so I don't have just things strewn about my apartment all higgledy piggledy. Um, yeah. So let's just get into the presents. Um, this is for my friend. I'm not going to name her because she takes privacy very seriously and I totally respect that. Y'all know I'm a bit of an open book. I talk about like pretty much anything. Um, so but I know not everybody is like that. Some people are more private and I respect the heck out of that. I kind of wish I could um, hold back a little bit more, 
but where's the fun in that? So uh, anyway, so my friend, she loves natural fibers. Usually she prefers uh, really rustic yarns, but I'm trying to push her out of that. You know, me as an influence, um, I'm trying to push her out of that. So this is super soft. This is from uh, Hill Country Weavers, naturally HCW. Uh, Hill Country Weavers, obviously, like I've talked about this, but this is Camelback. And as the name suggests, it has camel contents. It's 50% camel, 50% silk. And that sounds amazing, right? And let me tell you, it is amazing. Like I think actually in this case, the sun helps because it captures the sheen. This is extremely shiny because of the silk content. And it's so soft because of the camel. Like I kind of want to get a sweater quantity of this for myself, even though I don't wear tan. It's strictly speaking, it's not going to look good against my skin. It's not, but it's so pretty oh it's so pretty and it's um because hcw they do it undyed it's just it's a really good way to explore the base um yeah i can't tell you guys how soft this is like this not the acl that i showed you guys i think in the last episode or maybe the episode before that it's very soft but there's fiber sticking out because of the alpaca the camel it's really just it's ultra smooth because of the high silk content um and this it i shouldn't tell you the price because my friend is eventually gonna watch it and all my friends watch this anyway it's gorgeous i highly recommend it if you haven't helped yourself to hcw naturally hcw i highly recommend it because look at that shine <sighs> that's just that's a lot it's a lot um yeah even in the shade you can see that shine mm, yeah it's gorgeous Okay, then the next gift is from my friend Megan of Kimchi & Co. Now, I adore her. I really do. Um, I had trouble picking what I was going to get her, though, because she, like me, is one who helps herself to what she wants in the moment. Um, that is to say, she has everything she wants because she buys it all, just like me. <laughs> so it was hard to buy for her. It really was. Um, but... When we were in Bountiful last, when we went to Seed Stitch, uh, I actually, hold on. I actually saw her admiring this yarn. Um, and this is the Plucky Knitter. I don't think there's a colorway name for it. It's just small batch number 15. I don't want to get up too close to the camera because the sunlight seems to wash it out. But you can see here, it's very speckled. Um, there's turquoise purple, orange, yellow, pink speckles. It's really beautiful. I tried to pick the two most evenly speckled skeins that I could. I got her two skeins just because I don't know what she wants to make it with it. We talked about doing the Orbits pattern by Unwind Knitwear. And um, that calls for a fingering, but I think she can fudge around with sport. And I got her two just because I don't know what, she's, what she wants to make. One would be probably enough for that design, but two just in case maybe she wants a matching hat. Maybe she'll make up a ray. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really, I wanted this for myself. So if she, I might make a matching one actually. Anyway, no, I won't. I'll, I'll hold off. But yeah, it's really gorgeous. And I know she likes this color because we talked about it there. Um, another thing that she admired while she was there was this guy. So this is made by uh, Kitty Ray, which is a local maker. I, I undid the button, sorry. Um, little button detail and cute fabric. I saw Megan admire this to the point where she even took a photo of it to like come back and buy later. So of course that night I DM'd the owner Kim of Seed Stitch and I was like, hey, you know that pink needle thing? I need it, don't sell it to anybody, it's mine. So yeah, <laughs> and this is the label for Kitty Ray. Um, it, it's carried at the Seed Stitch, you know, Seed Stitch and Bountiful. It's such a beautiful little shop. It really is. And um, they get in a lot of yarns. Uh, so I'm excited about that, especially indie yarn. Very important to me. To me. Not important to everybody. It's okay if it's not important to you. But yeah, so you see the different fabrics and there's like needle slots. And Megan seemed to really want it. And of course, I just, I wanted to get her something that she liked. So yeah, it's just a little two-part gift. It's nothing huge, you know, I'm still... I'm trying to be somewhat smart about my my finances now that I'm not taking care of another human being. Sorry, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that. But anyway, yeah, uh, I really love it, and I think the presents look really good together. 
Yeah. And I'm one of those people that loves everything in a box, like a neat box. So I'm going to put it in a box and then wrap the box so everything looks good together. Then the last gift that I have is quite large. Quite large. And I'm just going to show it to you. There's nothing I can say that'll prepare you for, for how ridiculous this gift is. This is a gift. It's a cat basket. It's a big old basket, fits a lot of stuff. It's for my friend Shanna, yarn nymph, and she loves cats, adores cats. She has cats, she likes cat things, awesome. And I thought this basket would be really cute to like, just as like decor. And also you could put like whips in it, you know, project bags, whatever. I just thought it was super cute. So inside, it's not just the basket, inside, well first I have, Megan's gift to Shanna in here and I I have that in here because I asked Megan I was like look I'm getting this ridiculously large basket and it's gonna look really stupid if nothing is inside of it so can you please give me your gift too and I'll just put it in there so it looks less dumb so that's why that's in there um next is this journal this was the collab between Shelly Can and Hohi and Hohi and Co I can talk yeah so uh this is the fiber night uh journal it came out last year as a collab and it's plain so shanna can write knitting stuff or she could just use it as a regular old notebook um but yeah i really like it i'm very excited about it um i hope she likes it because i really like shelly can and i think it suits shanna's vibe which is like this cozy almost witchy thing and one of Shanna's favorite colors is purple. And I happen to have this guy. So this is Life in the Long Grass, L-I-T-L-J-G. And Life in the Long Grass in her DK base. And the colorway is Bathe. You can see it's a, it's a very icy lavender with red and pink speckles and slight, slight swirling. Um, but I thought this would look really great on Shanna and three skeins is enough for like, uh, I was thinking the, uh, the rib top from Jessie Mae. Oh my God. Why can't I remember things? Anyway. Yeah. With three skeins of D DK, Shanna can make a garment, even if it's a short sleeve one. I think it would look really cute on her and I hope she likes it. We'll see. I would like it. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm doing with that. And this giant cat basket will be in her home shortly. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we're meeting on Saturday morning lunch time-ish to have brunch at this lovely Italian place that I've wanted to try for many months. So I'm very excited. Um, and I was like pulling something because I forgot I have one more whip that I needed to show you guys. It is this guy um I just started it it it's another cable sweater another pink cable sweater after I just did after I'm almost done with Amara yeah so this is called Fisher Queen Fisher Queen I can't I don't know how to pronounce it but this is the one that uses the wandering flock um birthday ice cream that I showed you guys along with the cone of mohair that my friend um I'm calling you my friend now. I hope you're okay with that. Uh, uh, my viewer, uh, Marie and the Stars, uh, sent me after we, you know, I paid for it. I paid for it. It wasn't free. But, like, yeah, she knew that this mohair would go well, and it does. Like I said last episode, it's a perfect match. And um, if the light wouldn't wash it out, you can see. Yeah, I'm doing this to, to block so you can see in the shade. It really is a gorgeous match. I'm so, so excited with how this is working up. Um, I can't wait to show you guys more of this design once the cables really get going. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited. Um, things are things are on the up and up. I mean, I feel like every week things just get better and better. So I'm excited to show you guys more. Oh, it is a folded over neckline, by the way, and it's very, very nice. It's loose, which is good for me because um, honestly, I'm a little bit worried about the borrow. It is folded over as well, and it stretches out quite a bit, but I don't, you know, we'll see. But anyway, those are my gifts for my in-town friends. And um, of course, the week after, maybe it's the week after or the week after that, I'll be in, in New York for Christmas. Maybe I'll do like a more of a vlog style video. I'm not 100%, I'm not 100% sure. I have to uh, practice enunciating before 
the hearings start. Um, if you hear whistling, it's a very windy day. We have a winter weather advisory, even though the sun is so gorgeous. Um, so I apologize if you hear any whistling, but thank you for stopping in and watching my video. Um, chances are things will have changed from when I record this on Tuesday to Saturday or Sunday when I uploaded it. But I'm so excited, you guys, to show you more. Things are going so well. I'm so excited for the holiday season and for Christmas in New York. And I wish you and your family the very best and the greatest happiness. And thank you for being part of mine. Thank you. Okay, I'm out. Bye.